Cascading style sheets or CSS is a style sheet language popular for making website look pretty. So for example, we have this website here. You can see there are some hover effects and other stylings which are done in CSS. Now what if I remove the CSS? So you can see the browser is now rendering only the HTML documentation. So this is what CSS does to a page. It is used to make website look beautiful in a presentable way by adding various styling options like the color, spacing between words or letters, spacing between elements, even modifying the font and its size or adding borders maybe changing the background and much more. CSS can be used to define different stylings and layout variations of your web page. This is why it is known as style sheet. Why is it cascading? That I will discuss as we move along with this section. So now let's begin understanding CSS in a practical way. The first way I'm going to show you is inline styling. That's how you apply the CSS. Inline styles are a type of CSS styling which you can use inside your HTML tag itself. It's an easy way for you to start using styles inside HTML. So here I have defined very basic and simple HTML code. Let's start adding styles to it and for that you just have to pick the tag and give the attribute style inside them. Like here let's say I want to change the color of this heading. So inside the h1 tag I will give style attribute like this and you can see various styling names are being displayed. So inside these quotation marks you can give the name of CSS attribute that you want to style along with the value for that attribute. For giving the color, I will use the color attribute and I will give the value. So this is how the syntax looks like for applying inline styling inside any HTML element. Now if you look at the output, you can see the heading color has changed. The syntax for defining the style looks something like this. We have the tag name, the style attribute, then we have the property name, colon, value and then we end that with a semicolon. Now if you have new property, you add another property after the semicolon and this goes on. Now let's try to apply multiple styles inside a single tag. For example, I want to align this heading to the center so I'll give the text align attribute. This attribute is used to modify the text alignments so you can see various alignment options are displayed. I'll select center and now the heading is aligned to the center. Let's also apply some styling to this paragraph as well. I will again use the style attribute and will give the color and font size. Now you can use these font size options or you can manually define the size. I'll choose the font size right now and let's check the output. So you can add as many of these CSS attributes inside the style as you want. I've just shown some most commonly used attributes and not only to the tags which are defined inside the body but you can also apply CSS attributes to the body tag as well. Let's say for example, I want to change the background color of this body. So I'll give style inside body and will apply the background color attribute to change the background of the body. And you see the background is changed. So these are just the basic ways you can start with by applying styling with the inline way that is applying the style attribute with the tag itself. So there is one question here that what is inline styling? So basically 
giving the style attribute along with the tag name is called as the inline style or the inline CSS. So now you know how to apply the styling with inline way. Now let's take one step further. In this lecture, I am discussing how to define internal styling. Before we move on to the style tag or internal styling, let me show you example why the need arises to apply internal styling rather than just going with inline styling. So here I have defined an H1 and let's say I want to apply multiple styles to this H1 that is color, font style, size and border. All these stylings for a single element. Now imagine you have multiple elements and you have to give multiple styling to each of these elements. You can imagine how messy the code will get and will be even tough to modify any of those styling attributes. So that's why inline styling is not a preferred choice when you want to apply multiple CSS attributes. Only for applying fewer attributes, you can go with inline styling. So we do have a different approach and that is the internal styling approach. Let's take a look at that. Here I have given a header, a paragraph and a link. Now to apply internal styling to the HTML document, we use the style tag. So all the styling attributes which you will apply to your HTML document can be written inside the style tag. Let me show you how. I will say style tag here inside the head tag. Remember the style tag is always defined inside the head tag. Why? Because the head tag contains the metadata about the HTML document. So the style tag comes under that category. This kind of styling is also known as embedded styling. So the style sheet will affect the document they are embedded in. All right, so next step is to define the styling and we do that by giving the selector name like this. Let's say I want to apply styling to the body. So I will give body here and then opening the curly brackets. And now I apply the CSS attribute here. Let's also apply styling to rest of the HTML elements. I'll say here H1 opening the curly brackets and let me add few stylings. Similarly for paragraph, I'll say P here and we'll give styling inside the paragraph. Now for the link, I'll say A here and we'll apply the color, font size and font style. You can change the default look of the link too by giving styling to them. Let's check the output and you can see that the stylings are applied. We have used the internal styling approach that is by using the style tag. It is called internal styling because we define or embed the style tag within the HTML document. You can also define CSS in a separate .css file known as external styling which is our next topic. In this lecture, I'm going to discuss one more approach for applying CSS and that is external styling where the CSS is defined in separate .css file and then it is included or imported or embedded with a link tag inside your HTML document. So as we saw in the last lecture, we have applied internal styling by using the style tag inside HTML document. But you generally see huge CSS code and putting it in HTML is also not a good practice. It's a good practice to divide your CSS code into not only one but several CSS files and then you make those CSS files available to the HTML where you are using it. Now we are going to use the external styling approach and for that what I'll do is I'll create a separate file for CSS like this. You can give any name to it, but do remember to give the .css as a file extension. So now you can see we have a CSS file open here. 
inside this I'll apply all the CSS stylings which are inside the style tag so I'll cut all these stylings and only the stylings not the style tag as we have created a separate file now for CSS and I'll paste it here now if we check the output you can see the styling is gone the reason is that you need to make the CSS file available in the HTML and for that I'll use the link tag inside the head tag now here in the index HTML file I'll give a link tag now when I press enter after typing link you can see it shows two attributes defined inside the REL attribute shows the relationship between the linked file which we will give here in the href and the HTML document so right now you see that it is showing the relation as style sheet so mostly the link tag will be used to embed the CSS file inside the HTML document and inside the href that is the link reference I will give the CSS file name which is styles.css and you can see the moment I start typing the CSS file name it starts showing me the name already all right now the CSS is linked with this document let's save this go to the browser and refresh and you see that the styling is back but this time it is not inside the HTML document but defined in a separate CSS file so this way is called as applying the external styling let's talk about a relative question so how do you embed the external CSS file to your HTML document so it's the link tag which helps you to embed the CSS inside your HTML document let's now talk about the CSS selectors they are used to target HTML elements on the web pages which we want to style selectors are basically the way we apply CSS there are a wide variety of selectors like element class ID group universal and much more in fact the first selector I am discussing in this lecture is the element selector element selector in CSS is used to select HTML elements which are to be styled the syntax for element selector looks like this you have the element name in the curly brackets you give list of CSS property which we have already seen in fact so for example if I want to add styling to this h1 on the page then it will look something like this here h1 is the element selector this we have already seen as we have used this approach in many of our previous topics so this is actually called as the element selector now if you have three headings like this and want to add similar styling to them so rather than defining stylings for individual heading you can write like this let's say h2 color font size text align family and decoration and this will apply the styling to all the h2 tags in the HTML document here are few more examples of element selectors I have the division body unordered list and let's say list li so this is what an element selector is in the next lecture we will look at the class selector now let's talk about a relative question so what is element selector when it comes to selecting the element to apply the CSS one of the selector is element selector which basically refers the element that is the HTML element or tag name to apply the CSS like h1 h2 paragraph li division body and so on in this lecture I am discussing about class selector let's first of all understand a scenario I have defined an HTML document like this where I have three paragraphs two headings and two subheadings now let's say you want to add style to the paragraph 
so basically you will use the element selector and will give the stylings so now in the browser you see that all the paragraphs from the document share the same styling which is kind of obvious because that's what the element selector does but let's say if i want to apply styles to the first paragraph and its respective heading well in that case element selector won't work we have a bunch of rules now which you can apply to create custom styles think of this as an example if you want to create a website and you want that different elements or maybe similar elements should share that custom style which you have defined now instead of element selector i will define a custom class name so i will remove this p that is element selector and will give any suitable name let's say my style but this my style is a custom entity we have to inform the browser that this is a class and for that we begin the class name with a dot now the class is ready and to apply it we use the class attribute for example i want to apply the class on this paragraph now when i check the browser you can see the styles are added to the paragraph like we wanted now if i want this same styling to be applied on the h2 then i'll simply give the same class name inside h2 like this and now you can see the heading and paragraph share the same styling so this is the advantage of using the class selector you can define your own custom style and that you can apply to many different elements like here if i want to add this styling to h3 i'll simply give the similar class name here as well and now you can see the h3 and paragraph has same styling applied there is a shorthand way to define class inside any element in a single go and for that let's say i want to define h1 with class attribute so you can write like this h1 dot and the name of the class i will press enter and you can see the element is created with the class attribute now let's talk about a relative question the question is when will you use the class selector so as we discussed that when we have bunch of rules to be applied on various types of elements then we use the class class is basically the custom style you define on any element with the help of using the class attribute i am further continuing with the class selector lecture and there is one more concept which i want to discuss and that is the element dot class selector so as you can see in the code i have divided the contents inside div tags now what if a situation arise where you have given the same class names to multiple elements like this but want to select or target only the specific element so right now if i use the class selector this will apply styling to all the elements having the class name my style correct but let's say i want to apply this styling to only a particular element despite other elements sharing the same class name let's say i want to apply styling to this div so for that i will use this syntax that is element dot class selector as you can see now the styling is applied to the div element if i open the developer tool here you can see the elements sharing the same class name when i move to styles you can see it displays the check marks which indicates that the css style sheet is applied now when i move to the elements sharing the same class name you can see it shows the user agent style sheet which is default style sheet provided by the browser itself so the style sheet won't be applied here despite the fact that they have the same class name 
So when we give the element dot class selector, it tells the browser to select the element which is having that particular class name. So this is what the use of element dot class selector is. If I change this div to p here, then among all the paragraphs defined in the document, it's going to target the paragraph having the class name. All right, so now we will be discussing about the ID selector. ID selector is used to apply styling to a unique element on the page. So consider a scenario where we want a set of rules to be applied on a unique element inside the HTML document. So when the element is unique throughout the whole HTML page, we assign that element with an ID attribute. And to access that element, we use the ID selector. Here with div, I'm going to say the attribute ID is equal to my ID. Just like class selector, we give the ID name here. But giving the name is not enough to access the ID attribute. That's why we begin with a hash sign when we want to give the ID selector. So here I say hash my ID. Now if you look at the browser, you can see the styling is applied. Remember, if you give the same ID to multiple elements, the browser won't give any error, but it is the developer's job to follow the standard practices. There is also a shorthand to define ID inside any element in a single go. And for that, let's say I want to define h1 with ID. So I will write h1 hash and the ID name. I'll press enter and now you see the element is created with the ID attribute. The relative question is explain the difference between ID and class selector. So the class selector we apply to multiple types of elements. ID selector we do apply to maybe a paragraph or a division or an H1 or any other element. But at a time we prefer to have only one ID for each page. As I mentioned, if you give same ID to multiple elements, the browser will not give any error, but that's not the practice one should follow. When you say ID, that means it has to be a unique ID and the ID selector CSS means you are applying few CSS rules meant only for that unique element. Grouping of elements sharing the same styling is made easy with the help of group selector approach. Group selector is nothing but to select multiple elements in a group with the element selector and style them together. Consider this example. I want to apply similar styling to all these elements. So rather than giving individual styling to them and copy paste those styling options, I will simply group them together like this. I'll say article, paragraph and also my division which is a class. So you see that there is an element selector and a class selector together and I have grouped them together. So you can see all the elements now share the similar styling. Thus grouping of elements is a very effective and time saver approach when you want elements to share the same styling attributes. Now let's talk about a question. Can you group elements and class selectors together? Certainly you can as we saw earlier in this code. We have tried to group elements as well as the class selector. There are a few set of rules and styling which you want to define as global setting for the page. In such case, you can use the universal selector. When there is no styling applied to elements, styles defined in the universal selector will be applied. So now let's try universal selector practically. You see this code. Now here if I want to add styling to all the elements, I will say asterisk and will open the curly bracket like this. Universal selector is denoted by an asterisk sign and it is used to select any 
and all types of elements in an HTML document. Let me add some styling here. So this is how the syntax looks like when working with universal selector. You have the asterisk and you give the property and value and you keep on adding such CSS properties. Now when giving only the asterisk sign, it will select all the elements of the document as you can see. But if we give a particular element with an asterisk sign, then it will select only that element. So here if I say P with an asterisk, then the style will get applied to the paragraphs. If I add a span here and want to give styling to only the span, then I will simply add span here. We'll also change the font style. Similarly, for division, if I add another division tag in the document and want to apply style to all the divisions, then I'll say asterisk and div. So you can see stylings are applied to both the divisions. This is how you can work with universal selector. It's very useful and effective as well. As we move ahead, you will have a clear idea when will you use the universal selector as well. So what is the purpose of universal selector? We use the asterisk and we define the styling. Whatever styling you define with universal selector is generally a set of style which you want to apply when there is no other styling applied. In a web page, generally we see that there are few padding or margin for all elements by default you want to apply. In such case, universal selector is also very useful. So you have learned how to apply styles to HTML elements. Now is the perfect time to know about the CSS specificity. It's all about CSS priority. Think of a specificity like this. If there are two or more CSS attributes defined for the same element, the selector with the highest priority or specificity value will get the preference and its style declaration will be applied to that HTML element. For example, if I have a header and two paragraphs defined inside an HTML document like this, let's try to add style to this H1 using the element selector. I'll say H1. Let me give color red, the font size, let's say 3EM and font family cursive. So you can see the styles are applied to only the header that is the H1. Now if I want to access this same H1 with class attribute and with different styles too. So for that I will define a class here and will apply some new styling to it. Let me just say class is equal to my header. Now also defining the class, I'll say dot my header. Color, let's say blue. Font size small and font family courier new and this option. Okay. Now you can see that the H1 is displayed with the new styles despite already defining h1 with element selector if i click inspect element here you can see in the styles the styling attributes inside the h1 are striked out that is those rules are cancelled or in a way overridden this is because the class selector has higher priority over the element selector similarly if I have a condition like this where I have defined an ID as well as the class on the same element and I have defined different backgrounds for them. Now when you look at the output you can see the paragraph with the ID is getting priority in spite of having class defined and the other paragraph is accessed with the element selector. Again in the developer tool you can see the class and element selectors are striked out. Because the ID selector has 
higher priority compared to the class selector. Now if I also add inline style to this paragraph, let's say style is equal to background, I just give some value in the RGB. Let's save this. Now you see the priority is changed as it gives priority to inline style more than even the ID selector and of course the class selector as well. Thus every selector has its place and priority defined. The CSS specificity or priority of selector goes this way. Inline has the higher priority, ID selector, then class selector and the element selector. After that we have the group selector and then the universal selector. So in a way you see that inline style has higher priority unless there is one option and let me talk about that. Well if you still want to give more importance to a value or a property despite their specificity then there is a rule called exclamation important. This rule will override all the previous styling rules applied on that property and will give more importance to it. So let's say if I want this class selector styling to be displayed on the paragraph then I'll simply add exclamation important here like this and you see the inline style is overridden and the class selector is given higher priority just because you have given the exclamation important. Remember exclamation important that is important is not a very good way when you are applying the styling because it breaks the normal execution sequence and sometimes it is very difficult to find out some issues with CSS if you have used important. Better not to practice this but there are situations when you have a lot of CSS applied in some cases when nothing works and you want to force the CSS to apply specific rule certainly you can go with exclamation important. So now let's talk about questions. The first question is what is CSS specificity and what is the sequence. So we have already discussed that it's all about priority especially when the rules are clashing. If they are not clashing you will not have any problem right. Let's say in H1 you have color in element selector and you have font size in class selector then there is no clash between the rules. So both of the rules will be applied but when there is a clash of rules then there is a priority defined by CSS and that's what CSS specificity is. The next question is what is the purpose of exclamation important. So basically this important makes the property as a highest priority regardless where it is used whether it is in class selector or anywhere the moment it becomes an important that means it is important it will have highest priority but as I mentioned not a good practice to use important unless you are being forced to use it. While developing websites CSS will always be a necessity but along with that maintaining the CSS when building a website is also quite important and it is always a best practice to get ahead of maintenance by starting with a baseline. To do this we as developers define a CSS reset file to prevent any inconsistencies across different browsers while developing websites. So what is a CSS reset file? Well all the browsers have default rules with properties and values applied to all the pages before loading files. A CSS reset file targets all the rules that our different browsers apply defaults to and reset them to their minimum possible value. The ideal goal of the reset style sheet is to reduce browsers inconsistencies in things like default line heights, margins, font sizes, padding etc. Now this is required because as I said every browser has its own default user agent style sheet that it uses to make unstyled websites appear more legible but many times it creates havoc with the defined style sheets provided by the developer. With all that said let's look at what a simple reset file looks like. 
and to begin with let me create an html file inside the body i'll give h1 let me define a form and giving few inputs like text mobile url email date range color and button I'll apply some basic styling to them. For division, I will set margin 10 pixels and center align the elements. And for body, I'll add font size 12 pixels and padding of 20 pixels. Now, if you observe the output, you can see there is some default margin and padding applied on the document. This might cause some positional error when we further apply different positional styling to the document. Now to avoid this, we define a reset file using the universal selector. In most cases, it's better to define a reset file using a universal selector, or you can always use element selectors to reset them individually. So inside the universal selector, I'll set the margin and padding to zero. And you can observe the output. All the default and meaningless spaces are nullified. By doing this, we are removing the default styles of the browser for more consistency. Now everyone has their own perspective regarding which CSS reset file to use, as there are various approaches for defining a reset file, as you can see here. When it comes to working with selectors, there are also various combinators which come into the picture. A combinator is something which shows you the relationship between the selectors by combining multiple CSS selectors. There are generally four combinators which CSS provide us. And they are descendant selector or combinator, that is a space, child selector, or a combinator which has a greater than sign then we have the adjacent sibling selector where you use the plus sign general sibling selector where we use tilde sign all these are unique in a way for dealing with complex styling situations with the help of combinators you would be able to alter all the elements which are of the same type rather than just changing one element at a time Another usage is that you will be able to easily target the child elements of a particular element without affecting the parent element and many other things. So let's start learning these combinators and understand them more precisely. When it comes to working with selectors, there are also various combinators which come into the picture. Let's discuss what is a combinator. Combinator is something which shows you the relationship between the selector. There are various combinators which we will be learning starting with the descendant combinator also called as descendant selector. So the descendant selector is used to match all the elements which are descendants of a specified element. Think of this as a parent child relationship. By using descendant selectors, you can target the contents more precisely based on their relationships. So if there are certain child elements residing inside a parent element and you want to apply styling to those child elements, you will use the descendant selector. Let's see an example quickly. In the body, I will first define a division with class MyStyle, which will contain an H2 h3 and two paragraphs we'll give an hr here and defining another division with h2 h3 and two paragraphs now let me add few styling to this division i will say div dot my style using the class selector here now if we check the output the styling is applied to all the elements which are inside this division Let's say I want these styling to be applied on paragraphs only. So I will give P here. So what this means is 
that you want to target all the paragraph tags defined inside this division which is having the class my style so this div becomes a parent element and the paragraph becomes the child element so if you look at the browser only the paragraphs are now displayed with the styling this is what the descendant selector does now if i give a comma in between the styles will be applied to all the paragraph tag it can find inside the document along with the div tag with the class my style so adding comma works as a separator but in descendant selector we don't use separator unless you wish to target elements like this where i have given the descendant selector and a simple element selector so the browser will read all the h2 defined inside the document and will display the styling now let's talk about relative question explain the use of descendant selector so this selector is used to match all the elements which are descendants of a specified element as i mentioned earlier just like a parent child relationship the next question is what will you do to select all the descendant paragraphs which are inside this div you'll have to use div then the paragraph with a space that is to select the descendant paragraphs which are inside the division the third question is explain what this syntax will do and the syntax is div dot my dash style space p and then you have style in the curly brackets so it will select the paragraph which is inside the division having the class my style so only these paragraphs are selected but not the h1 or other elements now you know the terms parent element child element and their relationship well the child selector is somewhat like that it is very similar to descendant selector consider this scenario which we saw in the previous lecture the only change i will do here is i will define this paragraph inside a section tag let's check the output and let me represent the same output in the hierarchical form as well here division is the parent this paragraph and section are direct children of the division and this paragraph inside section is a grandchild of the division what i mean to say is this paragraph isn't the direct child let's proceed further now so talking about this division it contains two paragraph tags as child elements and the second paragraph is defined inside the section tag so if i give styling like this i'll say division dot my style space p let me add color font style font size weight and family now the styles are getting applied to the descendant paragraphs of the division but what if i want to apply this styling only to the first paragraph which we can also say as the direct children of the div tag so it means this paragraph tag inside the section will not be targeted by the style sheet we don't want to target that first thing which you can think of is why not just give a class name to this p and apply the styling i'll say p dot giving the class name and you can see we have achieved what we wanted but this approach is still a lengthier one the shorter approach or the better approach is that we use the child selector so if i just remove the class name and add the greater than sign and if we look at the browser you can see there is no change so what child selector does is it's going to match or it's going to select the elements which are direct children of a specific element so if i give child selector like this it's going to select all the paragraph tags which are direct children of the division tag 
but won't select the paragraph which is inside the section tag because it's not the direct child of this division. So that's how the child selector works. Now let's talk about a relative question. Explain what is the use of child selector. So the child selector is used to select the elements which are direct children of the given parent element. The next question which is a kind of assignment in which how will you select the immediate child of the paragraph in below given code. So we have already seen the child selector in this session. So you will use the paragraph greater than span syntax to select the immediate child of the paragraph tag. In this lecture I am discussing about the adjacent selector. It is very useful and can save a lot of your time dealing with more complex CSS styling. So as the name says, the adjacent selector is used to select the element that is directly after another element. In simpler words, looking at this example, you can say that this paragraph tag is right next to the H3. That means H3 and this paragraph are on the same level, thus making them adjacent to each other. Let's understand that with the help of an example. Let me create a document which contains multiple elements. I'll say div here and will define three paragraphs. Also, I want an H3 tag here. I'll copy this div and paste it three more times. Also to separate them, I'll use the HR tag. So we have defined the document. Now let's say every immediate paragraphs after every H3 should share the same styling. So your first approach will be to define a class for that paragraph and give that class to rest of the paragraph tags, right? But isn't that time consuming and not to mention a lengthy process as well. This is where the adjacent selector comes in as this H3 is adjacent to paragraph that is all these paragraph tags are coming immediately after every H3. So what I'll do is I'll use the adjacent selector here by giving the plus sign. This means that it will select all the paragraph tags which are adjacent to or coming right after the H3 tag. Let me define some styling here. So as you can see in the browser all the adjacent paragraphs are now sharing the same styling. The adjacent selector is very useful for styling the elements which are defined in a proper consistent structure. Well, if you want that only particular section should get this style, in that case you have to use the class attribute like this. Just remember that when using the adjacent selector with parent elements, the sibling element, that is the element which you want to select should have the same parent element. Now let's talk about a relative question which is an assignment. How will you add background color to H3 by using adjacent selector? So if you have to get the answer to this, the code will be you use div plus H3 that is for the adjacent selector. So you can easily select the adjacent element H3 for adding background color. Let's try this practically. So here we have the div plus h3. Let me set the background color and you can see that it is applied. The next question is explain what will happen if I add style like this. For example, I say div dot heading plus p and I give color yellow. So the color will be applied to the paragraph which is coming immediately after the div tag. Do note that there is adjacent selector given here which means the paragraph is not inside the div. It is at the same level and the very next element to the division. The attribute selector allows you to select the elements based on their attributes and value of those attributes. Whereas we see that the class and id attribute allows you to style the element based on a single attribute type. So let's look at few examples and also understand the syntax. 
inside body i will define two paragraphs and will apply class attributes to both of them i'll say class my style and para now i will define an unordered list and inside i'm going to define links i'll give anchor tag defining the href and also giving the target attribute is equal to underscore blank giving two more li's so right now if we check the output it looks something like this now let's say i want to style the anchor tag or rather want to apply style to particular anchor only so your approach generally may look like this where you have the a dot link and this is how you give various css rules so you'll give the class name to it and apply the styling but as i mentioned earlier the id attribute will target single element and class can target multiple elements but if you want that instead of the attribute name you want to target the value of the attribute you use the attribute selector so let me give the attribute selector here in the style i'll say a and the square brackets and inside i give the attribute name let's say target here so this is how the syntax looks like where we have the element in the square bracket we have the attribute so let's say a square bracket target let me apply color font style and font weight now what this will do is it will select only those links which are having target as their attribute we have applied target to these two links so when i open the browser you can see these two links are having the styles applied because we have given target in the attribute selector now if i say target is equal to underscore blank it will select only that particular link which is having underscore blank defined inside target so now we are giving the value along with the attribute name so you can see the first link is being targeted here not only that i can also give href is equal to let's say google.com but here it is going to be case sensitive because we have given the value inside quotes so i were to access this paragraph i would have said p class equal to para this is similar to class selector but with attribute selector 2 you can get the same result so this was just the basic syntax for attribute selector from the next lecture we will be seeing some advanced syntaxes of attribute selector let's talk about a question i am going to show a practical scenario here how will you select the paragraph with the attribute selector which has the name attribute defined and is the direct child of the anchor tag which is adjacent to the div tag this is the styling code which you can use to select the paragraph which has the name attribute defined as per the given conditions now let's look at the attribute spaced selector here is the syntax when we use the tilde sign with attribute selector it represents that the attribute whose value is separated by white spaces or not should be selected so for example if i define an attribute selector where i want to select all the paragraphs having the class name as my class i will write like this p then attribute selector class tilde sign equals my class so what this will do is it will target the paragraphs whose class name contains the word my class the class names which are separated by the white spaces and contains the value my class will also get selected as the tilde sign will ignore the white spaces in short white spaces or not the value gets selected let's see this practically I will define two paragraphs here one with a class and other without a class giving a division here defining two more paragraphs inside this and giving class attribute to 
this paragraph but the name will have few white spaces now in the styles let me use simple attribute selector like this not using the tilde sign here applying color font size and style to this now in the browser you see that only the first paragraph is selected now i will give the tilde sign here let's just save this and you can see that the styles are being applied to this paragraph as well because we wanted this value to be selected despite having white space or not thus we used the tilde sign and even if i give class name like this you can see it is still getting selected but if i remove the space then that paragraph is ignored because now this becomes a whole word despite there being my style in it let's talk about the questions what will be the output of this css code where i have the division hash heading and the greater than sign and we have the anchor tag and target blank color red now let's break down this step by step looking at this code you can make out the first portion of the code that is div hash heading is going to select the division which has the id attribute heading as the hash sign is used to denote the id attribute after that the greater than sign is child selector which will select the direct child of the element given which is in this case anchor tag so this part will select the anchor tag which is the direct child of the division and to be more specific attribute selector with tilde sign is used target tilde equal to blank now this will select the target attribute having the value blank despite the value having blank spaces in them when we use the caret sign with attribute selector it will select the attributes whose value is prefixed by a given value for example if we define attribute selector saying a that is anchor and inside brackets href caret sign equals h or even caret equals to hash then it will select all the anchor tags whose reference name starts with h or the hash symbol so in the code i will define an ordered list first then i will define four allies inside let me define four anchor tags here now let me give references here i'll say href google.com here i'll say hash gtx.com and ghi.com now let's say i want to apply style to all the links which start with g so in the styles i will define attribute selector where i'll say href caret equals to g let me add few styles i'll say color font style and size so this styling will be applied to all the links whose reference starts with g now if i change this to hash sign it will select the links which start with hash sign so this is how the caret sign works with the attribute selector let's talk about a relative question what will be the css code if you want to select all the anchor tags which begin with letter c and have target value blank also that anchor tag should be the direct child of the div having class attribute set as heading so to select all the anchor tags which are direct child of this div first thing i will write is div dot heading where heading is the class name now to select the child anchor tags of div i'll use the child selector then a which is an anchor tag and attribute selector saying href as we want to select the links which begin with letter c i will say caret equals c also 
we want to select the target attribute which has the value blank so for that i write target equals blank and if you want to neglect the white spaces too you just give the tilde sign here before equal to so this will select all the anchor tags which are direct children of division beginning with letter c and have target attribute set to blank as the caret sign is for prefix value the dollar sign in attribute selector is for suffix that is it selects the attribute whose value ends with the given value for example if i define attribute selector where i give the class attribute dollar sign equals n then this will select all the classes whose name end with n let's try this practically let me declare four paragraphs and giving class i'll say my dash test here i just say my test my test in camel case and let me just say my dash t capital test now in the styles if i give attribute selector class dollar equals to test it's going to select all the classes whose name end with test as we all know the class names are case sensitive so rest of the classes won't be selected despite having the name test if i change this t to upper case t you can see it selects these two classes as their name end with upper case t now let's discuss an assignment select all the links which start with the letter c and ends with dot com using the attribute selector so you can write the styling like this you say a that is anchor tag inside the brackets you give the href caret equals to c this will select the links which start with c and inside second bracket you give the dollar sign equals dot com so this will select all the links which end with dot com whenever we use the asterisk sign for attribute selector it will select the attribute whose value contains at least one occurrence of the given value for example if i declare the attribute selector where i give the class asterisk sign equals g or maybe pass a string word here then it will select all the classes which have letter g or word string inside their class names let's practically check it inside body i will define two anchor tags will give just the random reference here and a name attribute saying google link and here i will just give the reference and target attribute now in the style i want to select the link whose name contains the letter g so i will say a square bracket open name star is equal to g bracket close and let me add few styles here color font style and size so this will give me the link which contains the letter g inside its name attribute as you can see in the output you can give any letter or character or even numeric value as long as the element contains that given value so for example if i change this g to double o it will still show me this link because it still contains double o if i change the attribute here and say show me the target which contains the letter f notice that the f is the ending letter here so in the browser you can see the link targeted one more thing this attribute provides is that you can ignore the case as well so if i change this href to upper case and if i try to give the attribute selector like this then of course it's not going to show anything but if i add the i after the value it will ignore the case for the given value now if i check the browser you can see the css is applied
so i basically is to ignore the case so the value may be in upper or lower case it will not mind it now let's talk about relative questions so what will be the output of this css code division dot my style you have a greater than sign then anchor and href we have the dollar and dot com is used here again you have a square bracket where href star and then we have v assume that we have a code like this where we have a division and inside there are few links so let's break down the css code first the div dot my style will select the div which has the class name defined as my style as the dot sign is used as class selector then after we have the greater than sign which is child selector this will select the direct child elements of the div so div dot my style greater than anchor will select all the anchor tags defined inside the div now further there is a dollar sign with href which will select the links ending with dot com and after that there is an asterisk sign with href which will select the link that contains the letter v inside them so this code will actually select this particular anchor tag where it ends with dot com and has v somewhere in the value when we use the pipe sign in attribute selector it will select the attributes whose value is exactly same as the given value or the given value is followed by the hyphen sign for example if i define the attribute selector where i say class pipe sign equals test then it will select all the classes which begin with the value test note that this value will only be selected if one of these conditions are matched so in the first condition if it finds the word test then the class will get selected in the second and third condition if the word test is found with the hyphen sign then also the class will be selected if the class name comes after the hyphen sign then the class will not get selected also you give the name class equal to test style then it won't get selected either let's check this practically i will define three paragraphs with three different class names my my style and my dash style now let me apply styles to these paragraphs using attribute selector i want to select all the classes which start with name my so if i give here an asterisk sign equals to my and giving the styles like color font size and style then all these paragraphs will be selected as they all start with the word my which you can see in the output as well but when i change it to the pipe sign instead of asterisk then you can see the second paragraph is set to default styling why because this class name does not follow the parameters which the hyphenated selector offers as we saw in the example a few minutes back that the class name given in camel case will not be selected by this attribute selector as it does not have a hyphen let's talk about questions how will you apply css to all the sibling paragraphs of division with their class name using hyphenated attribute selector in this html code so if you want to select all the sibling paragraphs of division first thing you will write is div and then the tilde sign the tilde sign is used to select the sibling elements now to select the element paragraph we give p here and then attribute selector as we want to select the classes starting with the style so inside brackets you give class pipe equal to style thus this will select the sibling paragraph of the division by their class names 